Hi, my name is Caroline Poland, and I'm the founder and CEO of Poland and Associates Consulting. And today I want to talk about some basic strategies to help you cope during this uncertain time with COVID-19. And these are strategies that you can utilize for a variety of situations, not just COVID-19, but because this is the context with which we are all living right now, I thought I would direct this video specifically to that. So my first coping strategy is to maintain connections with others. Who's your community and what are you doing to maintain connection with your community? Again, that could be virtual game nights or engaging in a religious service online or virtual workouts with friends or coffee dates, but remembering that you are part of a community, that no man is an island and we're not meant to do life alone. And that's all the more true in an uncertain time like COVID-19, we need our community but it's going to look different. And that's part of the grieving process of COVID-19. So how are we going to engage in our community well? I think it's also important to connect into this idea of moving from a me mindset to a we mindset that what we do impacts those in the community. And so my choice to reach out to my friends or engage with them is impacting them during this time. My choice to stay indoors is also impacting others. And so when I'm tempted to feel frustrated uh, or when I start to get annoyed about the things that I am missing out on, I not only acknowledge that those things are real, that my frustration and grief is real, and I also hold my why with that. And I think it's important to identify your why in the middle of all of this, that we're doing specific things for a reason. And so my why of why I'm staying in is for the elderly in my community, for the people with compromised immune systems, for the essential workers, for the healthcare workers, those working on the front lines, I am going to do my part helping to flatten that curve. So identifying our why is important in the middle of this. My next strategy is to maintain healthy thought patterns or challenge thoughts when they start to become more irrational or distorted. I've talked in other videos about the idea of using a thought record, and I think that that is incredibly important as we continue to go along, as well as to recognize when our thoughts move towards a more either or or all or nothing uh, place, or if we're engaging in a shades of gray thought pattern. And so things can really be both and, and being able to hold things that feel at opposite ends of the spectrum together at the same time is important for maintaining our mental health and not ratcheting up our anxiety or feelings of depression even more than this situation already is naturally going to do that. And so what I mean is by being able to maybe hold frustration and enjoyment together at the same time that I can feel really frustrated or angry or annoyed about certain things and I can enjoy the nature that I'm seeing on a walk and I can enjoy this conversation with a friend. If I have to exclude one or the other, then I'm choosing to cut away part of reality. And when we do that, we start to create an incongruence in our reality and so that is stressful and anxiety inducing. My next coping strategy is to just give yourself grace. I think sometimes it can be really easy to be hard on ourselves, like I should know how to navigate this better, I should know the right answers to things, I shouldn't be struggling so much, I should be better than this, um, any number of, of narratives that we tell ourselves. I want to remind you that it's important to give grace for yourself and your humanness in the middle of this situation. There's no step-by-step -step guidebook for navigating living well in the middle of a pandemic. We're really writing that book as we go and we're using evidence-based strategies from other situations and we're applying it to this situation, but we're doing this situation for the first time. You haven't had to live in a pandemic before. And so we don't have a set of neural connections for that. And so just like uh, learning to do anything takes practice and time, living well in the middle of such an uncertain and unknown time and in the middle of a pandemic takes a while to learn and it's going to be clunky and that's okay that's not a failing on your part at all the clunkiness of living in a time like this is normal so welcome to your humanness being human is all you can be but it's important to give yourself grace and in the clunkiness and the messiness of this 
we're learning as we go. And so when you do something that it, you realize could have been done better to be able to recognize that you could have done this better or you would like to do this in a different way and you can do it better the next time because you're learning, because you're growing in the middle of this um, and because you're human, which means that you can't do it perfectly no matter how much practice we have. So practice giving yourself grace this week in the middle of the hard things that you are experiencing and the uncertainty of living in a pandemic. So again, these strategies are just ways to cope and manage emotions and build some resiliency in your life. None of them are magic wands. They're not going to take away uh, the uncertainty that we're experiencing. They're not going to take away the grief that we're experiencing or the anxiety or any number of other experiences that we're having. But what they do is allow us to live well or in a more regulated space in the middle of those things. So again, these coping strategies are just about allowing us to live a more regulated and effective way in the middle of these hard things. They're not going to take the hard things or uncertainty away. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Poland and Associates, and I will be continuing to post videos here on this YouTube channel about mental health and wellness during this time.